Hello, I'm Fred Schneider and you're tuned in to The Weekly Report, a look at news and insight related to programs and services provided by departments of the City of Kansas City, Missouri. The Kansas City Dream Home Program is accepting applications from first-time and displaced home buyers who meet income guidelines. This program provides qualified residents with a second mortgage loan at 0% interest that is forgivable over time. To learn more, please visit kcmo.org slash dream. The Americans for the Arts Public Art Network has recognized the city's Prairie Logic public art installation as one of the top 50 such artworks in the country. Prairie Logic is a transparent boxcar surrounded by local prairie grass and is inspired by Missouri's prairie and railroad history. The artwork was installed last fall on the Block 110 garage at 12th and Walnut Streets. For more information about Prairie Logic and the 1% for Art program, visit kcmo.org art. Now let's check in with some of our city's departments for information and insight. Hi, I'm Heidi Downer with the Kansas City, Missouri Parks and Recreation Department. As summer finally arrives, residents are invited to celebrate with Parks and Rec. We have many fun events planned that the whole family will enjoy. Come out to Southmoreland Park for the 21st annual Heart of America Shakespeare Festival. This free festival will take place between June 18th and July 7th and will present As You Like It a delightful comedy featuring mistaken identities, madness, and mayhem. Gates will open at 6 p.m. with parody performances before the 8 p.m. curtain at 6.30 and 7.15. For more information or tickets, visit kcshakes.org. Residents are invited to the grand reopening of the Greg Kleist Community Center on Saturday, June 22nd at 10.30 a.m. Crews recently completed a massive renovation of the center, adding many new amenities, including steam rooms, a hot tub, a dry sauna, fitness equipment, and more. In addition, ADA accessibility improvements were made, and the locker rooms, pool area, and fitness room flooring have all been updated. Yoga Rocks the Park has come to Kansas City. Every Sunday morning throughout June, families are invited to Roanoke Park for a yoga and music gathering. Registration begins at 9 a.m. Children will enjoy Camp Yoga Rocks from 9.50 to 11.20 a.m. while adults can focus on yoga from 10 to 11.15 a.m. Afterward, families can enjoy the music and play in the park. This event costs $12 in advance or $15 at the park. For more information, visit yogarocksthepark.com and click on Kansas City. And of course, the second annual concert in the park, featuring the Eddie Moore Quartet, will take place Thursday, June 27th from 6 to 8 p.m. at Roanoke Park. Residents are invited to bring their blankets, lawn chairs, and refreshments while enjoying the music. To learn more about these or other events Kansas City, Missouri Parks and Recreation has to offer, visit kcparks.org and click on the calendar. Or give us a call at 816-513-7500. Unfortunately, Kansas City has garnered national attention from horrible child abuse cases this past year. One of those cases involved a juvenile handcuffed to a pole in the basement. KCPD's Jonathan Stone was the first officer on the scene. We have a call to support DFS who had to gather information on juvenile and a report of child abuse. And she allowed us in and I asked where David Jr. was at. She said he's downstairs sleeping. So I said, well, I'm going to go let him know we're there. Okay, so if he hears our voices, he's not worried. She said, I'll, I'll let him know. I said, no, no, you just stay here. I flipped the light switch on. I immediately heard a voice of a, a child uh, repeating, I didn't do anything, I didn't do anything, I didn't do anything. As we come around the corner, we noticed that there was a child handcuffed around the metal support beam that's holding the house up, laying on the concrete floor. Uh, his living conditions at that time was simply a thin uh, 
it looked like a knitted blanket on a floor to lay on, and they provided a pillow. David appeared to be a a a outside the malnutrition, a, a normal 17-year-old boy. Kansas City Police Department is very proactive when it comes to uh, crimes against children. Matter of fact, we have our whole our own our own unit that uh, is dedicated to to that aspect. Um, they also provide uh, specific training uh, for officers who um, would like uh, to further their ability on identifying uh, possible crimes, whether it be abductions or or just uh, abuse and neglect. Um, and so through that training, uh, I believe that uh, without it, uh, there's a good chance that when the lady said, no, that boy doesn't live there, and DFS looked at us and said, I think we might have the wrong address, there's a good chance we might have just walked away. And who knows if David is still being there, there today. If you suspect a child is being abused or neglected, please contact authorities. Many professionals are required by law to report it. We spoke with Officer Linda Hacker Bristow, an expert on child abuse cases. It's very important that all the community realizes that anyone can make a hotline call to the child abuse hotline. Once a hotline call is made, DFS or the Children's Division is required to make an appearance or to check out the, the call in some way, uh, whether it be either show up at the door, which they could, or go to the school or whatever the circumstances are. They may or may not have a police officer with them and they're gonna ask some very basic questions. If you make a report and it turns out to be a not a valid report or say you just saw a child running around in the street and didn't know where he belonged, you can't get in any kind of trouble for that. And mandated reporters are your, of course, the law enforcement, social workers, but it also includes medical professionals, uh, daycare workers, anyone like that is also required to, clergymen, even people that you wouldn't think would necessarily be mandated reporters, like dentists, um, uh, your pastor, your preacher. So there's a lot of people that are required as mandated reporters or required by law to make a call of anything that seems like suspicious or that a child may indeed be in danger. Nationally, there are three and a half million child abuse reports made every year. Every day, five children die in the U.S. as a result of child abuse. By making a call to the child abuse hotline, you might save a life. I'm Officer Shelley Gaddis. Have a safe week. Hi, I'm Floyd Peoples. I'm the fire marshal for the Kansas City Fire Department. Having an emergency plan in case of a fire is just as important as having a smoke detector. Exit drills in the home, or EDITH, can help people prepare for an emergency. Most home fires occur at night, when people are the least prepared. Home fires can become a disaster if you and your family are not familiar with how to escape during an emergency. To design your own home fire escape plan, sketch the floor plan of your home on a piece of paper. Indicate on the plan all doors, windows, and other areas from which you could escape from each room in your home. Draw arrows to indicate the normal exits, which would be your primary escape route. With an alternate color, draw arrows to indicate a secondary exit from each room in the home. Choose a location outside the home where family members should meet once they've safely escaped. A neighbor's front yard or sidewalk may be an ideal meeting place. Your fire escape plan may look great on paper, but does it really work? Regular exit drills in the home will allow you to test the plan and make adjustments as needed. When practicing your exit drills in the home, remember, to use an alternate escape route as well. Children should be closely supervised during drills in the home and no one should take unnecessary chances. As a reminder, an operating smoke detector should be located in each bedroom and on every level of the home, including the basement. Everyone should know the location of telephones in the home and where to find a telephone outside of the home. It is very important that children also know the 911 phone number in order to report a fire or other emergencies to authorities. Remember to take these following steps to stay safe in case of a fire. Prepare a fire escape plan. Install and maintain smoke detectors. Examine your home for fire hazards and take steps to prevent a fire before it occurs. 
To watch additional videos about 311 or other city services, check the FYI KC webpage at kcmo.org slash FYI KC. I'm Floyd Peoples, Kansas City, Missouri Fire Department. Have a great day. overseas, especially those in harm's way. Give them guidance. Give all of us in our nation, especially our leaders, your spirit of guidance and goodness, that we may serve all of our people, rich and poor, young and old, that we may be mindful of our many needs, and despite our differences of opinions, which sometimes can seem overwhelming and great, may our flag be a symbol of unity for all of us. We ask all of this in your holy name. Amen. Uh, welcome to Washington Square Park, one of our 220 parks throughout our city. And uh, obviously, welcome to a very beautiful day here in Kansas City. And uh, hope you enjoy uh, the program and, of course, the rest of your day. I stand here today on behalf of the Kansas City, Missouri Board of Parks and Recreation Commissioners. Um, and uh, they're the ones that oversee our organization. And uh, we're very glad that uh, they have a nice system that you're able to enjoy throughout our community. Uh, the memorial that we stand before today uh, was a partnership, as indicated earlier, between the Park Board and the, the Missouri Korean War Veterans Association. Uh, we treasure these partnerships to make uh, great memorials like this and a lot of what we do throughout our system. And uh, we've become an integral part of memorials that uh, honor those that fought in the foreign conflicts uh, that our country's been involved now for over 100 years. Of course, the Liberty Memorial off to, uh, to my right, your left is the, one of the more older institutions. Of course, that also housed the National War I Museum. A uh, short distance from here, south on Broadway, you have the Vietnam Veterans Memorial. Uh, we also have our Black Veterans Memorial over on the Paseo. And then up north in Anita Gorman Park is the Clay County Veterans Memorial. And those are just several of those that, uh, that honor, there again, those foreign conflicts. And it's important that we use these public park spaces to make those points known as far as uh, the foreign conflicts are concerned. And so we enjoy that opportunity to have those take place. We appreciate the partnership that's possible because of that. Uh, and I just want to make one other quick introduction. Jimmy Lawson, who's with us. Uh, Jimmy is a landscape architect on our staff, and she's the one that provided the design for the memorial behind us. And now we've enjoyed for, for 18 years. Thank you very much. And now a man that knows the meaning of hard work and making dreams come true. Please help me in, me in welcoming the mayor of Kansas City, Missouri, and United States Marine. Hey. The Honorable Sly James. This, uh, this event is particularly special to me because I'm a Marine. My father was a Marine before he passed. My son's a Marine. Uh, we've all served in the uh, service of our country. My father served in the Korean War. Uh, I understand 
what sacrifice means. I understand what it's like to be a parent with a son in a war theater hoping for a phone call with his voice as opposed to somebody else. I understand what it's like to be in uniform and what that does and how that impacts families and those around us. Those who fought in the Korean War were absolutely no different. The Korean War is often considered the forgotten war because of its juxtaposition between World War II and Vietnam. But it was a war. 900 Missourians lost their lives. 100 Kansas Cityans lost their lives. People who went and fought in that war passed right through those halls over there at Union Station. This city is tied to people in uniform in ways that we don't often think of. By far the vast majority of warriors, soldiers, Marines, sailors, Coast Guardsmen, Air Force, went through Union Station right across the street in those conflicts. So we're tied to it. We have the World War I Museum up there. We have the Korean War Memorial here. We understand what it's about. Well, thank you for uh, being here today and, and allowing me to speak. In 1950, my grandfather, Harold Myers, attempted to enlist in the Air Force. He was 17 years old, and uh, they told him he was too small, too skinny. Come back in a year, and uh, maybe we'll let you in. He came back in a year in 1951. He had gained enough weight to be enlisted in the Air Force, and they immediately shipped him to Korea. And uh, he told me stories of uh, when they entered the Korean Air Force or the airspace, he would have to strap a sidearm on because then they were officially in combat theater. And the, the time that he spent in the Korean conflict was a formative time in his life that shaped the man he would become and the grandfather who would eventually raise me. Uh, my grandfather passed four weeks ago, and uh, he was 82 years old. Uh, it was a very uh, uh, traumatic time for me because he had a big hand in, in who I am today. This monument will stand so I can take my grandchildren and show them that this represents who he was, who we were as a country, and the honor and the privilege that it is to serve in the United States military. And I am just so thankful and fortunate to be here on his behalf and on behalf of so many of the other veterans who serve this country faithfully. And I am I'm very appreciative. And I thank everyone who had a part in bringing this to Kansas City. Thank you very much. I commend you for organizing an event that enables citizens to respectfully dispose of old flags. That you would hold this event on Flag Day provides an opportunity to reacquaint citizens with customs and traditions that seem antiquated to many and that many of our citizens have forgotten or never learned. Some communities sponsor parades, others host special ceremonies with patriotic speeches and music, but, more, but most importantly, the flag of the United States should fly unabashedly over homes, businesses, and government and civic buildings. For as we participate in events that honor our flag, we are reminded of what it means to be loyal to the nation. We reaffirm our belief in liberty, in justice, and we celebrate our nation's unity. This morning we lowered this flag, the flag in this uh, shadow box. This is the first flag that has flown, and the only flag that has flown over this monument since it was, since it was dedicated on September the 11th, 2011. And we want to present that to you in thanks and gratitude for your service. Colonel, thank you so very much. Looking ahead, in observance of the Independence Day holiday, city offices will be closed on Thursday, July 4th. In addition, residents who usually have Thursday or Friday trash collection will receive this service one day later. Residents who usually have trash collection on Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday will not be affected. The following trash collection, July 5th to the 10th, is a no-tag period for trash collection during this time, residents may set out more than two bags of trash without tags. KC BizCare will be taking their small business expertise on the road to answer questions from individuals interested in starting a business. Visit them on Tuesday, June 25th from 3 to 5 p.m. at Officeport, located in the crossroads at 208 West 19th Street. 
In addition to KC BizCare, staff from Justine Peterson, Launch KC, and the Women's Business Center will be available to assist new and potential business owners. From 6 to 8 p.m. that day, the City's Special Committee on Small Business will also host a meeting to get input on how city government can better support tech startups. Any resident or business interested in Kansas City's tech environment is welcome to attend. The Public Improvements Advisory Committee, also called PIAC, is a 13-person committee that collects resident input regarding public improvements and makes recommendations to the Mayor and City Council. PIAC invites residents to attend its upcoming neighborhood hearings, scheduled throughout June and July. The next hearing will take place Tuesday, June 25th from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. at the Bruce R. Watkins Cultural Heritage Center. For a complete listing of PIAC hearings, please visit kcmo.org slash PIAC. For more information about this or any of today's stories, please log on to kcmo.org, scroll to the bottom right-hand corner, and click on the weekly report for links. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. I'm Fred Schneider. Have a great week.